morning, Harold. Hello, Professor. What did you think of that announcement? It was quite fantastically self-aggrandizing. Yes, it did go on a bit. The boy seems cool, though. Indeed. I'm sure it'll make a great source of distraction. Now, if you're quite ready... Sure. Um, ready for what? I made a breakthrough discovery at the Arboretum last night. Do you remember the last batch of bloomy rocks? Oh, the really small ones from the last intake? The ones with the strange shapes and the little holes and... The blue ones, yes. Turns out their surface composition doesn't just give us clues about our immediate aquatic environs. I think they've picked up some influences from outer space as well. Take a look through the microscope. You'll see what I mean. Just remind me exactly how that thing works again. Harold, are you fooling me? This will be the last time I explain it to you, so for once, pay attention. You need to open the hatch first. Now, activate the switch next to the bore to open the sample shelf. is in the container on the lower right. If you remember your left and right, bring it to the microscope and insert it into the hatch. Et voila! Check the microscope and finally you'll see what I mean. The one you're looking at now seems to have picked up radiation from our nearest sun. There's a particular mark for each time there's been a solar flare. I can only see one mark? That's the problem. There isn't enough of a recording on this one. I dated it to roughly 40 BC. So we need an older one. For... Exactly. Older ones, ideally. Although I doubt we'll have much luck catching more of them by chance. Oh, yes. We have to figure out when there's going to be a gap between flares. Flares cause the solar winds. A gap between solar storms is our only window for leaving this place. I need you to look into this, Harold. If anyone on board has an older rock, we need it procured, yes? But if we're not gonna be able to catch one, where am I supposed to start looking? You could start at Tommy's store. You and I both know that guy somehow gets hold of whatever those filter stations spit out and then sells them at an outrageous markup. Good evening, Jean. Nice to see you, Bridget. Is the sample in the microscope? I'm really curious to inspect it. Yes, you definitely should. Hey. Hey, you're the professor's assistant, Jeremy, right? Um, yes, but no. I'm Harold Halibut. I interned in your section for about a year. Oh, goodness, you're Microwave Boy. So, you do remember me. Yes, how could I forget that debacle? Actually, I've just met with your professor. Is everything okay? Not entirely, but I probably shouldn't be telling you. Okay, I'll... But I suppose if Moreau trusts you... I'm a bit worried about our ship's energy reserves. I thought I'd talk to your boss about it. She's the smartest person on board, isn't she? Reserves? Are we in some kind of trouble? Now I've said too much. Ask Moreau. Perhaps she'll tell you more. Did you guys talk about the Bloomy Rocks at all? Moreau said I should maybe check with your husband. As a matter of fact, we did. As for my husband, you'll have to ask him, which is more than I've been able to do the past few days. Knowing that infuriating rock collection, I'm sure he'll find you something. 
He's a sweetheart, really, you know? Go ask him. See you later. Bye, Richard. So... Dare I ask, what is it? So, Bridget told me about some kind of energy shortage, and to ask you about it. Any idea what she meant? Hmm. Yes, she mentioned she may have found a link between something in the water and our solar wind problem. It's speculative, and now isn't the time. That all? Um, what needs doing again? Harold, use the PDA. Anything else on your mind? Oh, no, it's okay. I'll be off. Be good, Harold. Cyrus, could you give him a message for me? Sure thing, Professor. Just ask him, how are the details coming along? Okay. I will ask him, but, um... Yes, yes, I know. I could ask him myself, uh, but didn't you stop to wonder why I don't want to? I just did stop to wonder. It's complicated, okay? We go back a long way and don't always see eye to eye especially on matters of categorization, nomenclature, and subsequent archiving methodology. Not that he ever saw fit to delineate his preferred... Uh, don't mind me, Harold. I just mean Cyrus has his stubborn phases, and I just can't talk to him when he's in one. Okay, say no more. Your message is safe with me. Actually, Harold... No, it's okay. Nothing. Run along now. are multi-dimensional memory marbles live life remember forever olduğumuz şu an çok çok mutluyum peki ama sen kimsin ve ben kimim bunları bir bilene soralım hayır nolamaz ya yanında olduğum için korkmuyorum sormayalım bilenleri Destination selected. Have a pleasant journey and a fantastic day. You may now exit the tube. Utterly unconcerned for your own safety, no respect for authority, wanton disregard for the future of humanity. Harold, good timing. You can explain things to the Major, can't you? Harold, come here and explain things. And yourself. Major. I'm just passing through. I really don't know what this is about. Hi, Felix. So you're not here to make excuses for this diminutive delinquent? Hey, I'm not diminutive. I've just got longer to live than you. And Harold, tell him about our plan. Harold! I thought I told you to stay out of trouble. I should have known you'd be wrapped up in this. I'm not in trouble. There is no plan. 
Are you questioning my authority and or organizational merit? What? No, Major. I... If I find out you're a bad influence on young Felix here... Not me, Major. Whatever Felix did, I'm sure it was meant innocently. And how would you know about that? Unless you're in league with him. I just meant... I mean, if you just relax. Relax? Harold, you're really starting to tweak my beak. Uh, but, but, what did Felix do anyway? Utterly unconcerned for his own safety, no respect or authority, wanton disregard. Anyway, Major, under whose jurisdiction is Harold in trouble? Mine! I'm the law here. Felix, will you be a witness to this? Absolutely. And can you testify to Harold's involvement? Only if he's willing to testify to mine. Harold, tell the truth now. It'll be easier in the long run. I haven't witnessed anything to testify. Damn it! Then the case is in danger of falling apart. I'm sure Felix's parents will deal with this. Good point. They should really be present while you question me, Major. I'm only a minor. Don't you throw the book at me, son. Where are they anyway? I don't know. And good luck finding them. Oh no, Felix. Have you lost them? Harold, leave this to the professionals. Felix, do you mean to tell me you've neglected to file a missing person or persons report? Shouldn't we look for them? Don't change the subject. But, Major, what is the subject? That's right, Harold. Know your rights. If, and I mean if, you're acting as some kind of heroic big brother figure to this young man, I expect you to be a positive influence. I, we, there's no... Come on, spit it out, man! Just leave me alone, Sandstrom. I've got fish to feed. Okay, Harold, but your fish won't save you if I catch you red-handed. Now, Felix! Where is Felix? Oh, no. Felix? Harold! You've lost him! Gah! Hello, Mr. Secretary. Uh, eight, right? I'm afraid not. You must be thinking of my brother, Secretary Eight. Or Secretary Twenty-Four, of course. Oh, sorry. I always get that mixed up. There are just three of you, right? Well, now, uh, three of us work for Old Water, yes. Oh, so there's another who doesn't? Hmm, yes, Secretary Eight is the man to ask about that. He remembers it all much better than I do. Remembers? Okay. Sounds serious. Anyway, I'm neglecting my post. Welcome to the Agora Arcades. Would you like to partake in the monthly all-water raffle bonanza? Oh, sure. Wait, is it free to enter? Certainly. The raffle is a generous gesture of frivolity from all water to you, the citizens of Fedora. What are the prizes? Well, there's a long list of luxuries. A plethora of pleasurable prizes. The full list can be perused at your leisure on the All Water Public Access Forum. Okay, I'm ready. I'll just spin her up. Drum roll, please. And... Looks like you were unlucky this time, but that's life. Try again next month. Same. 
What do you think about the announcement, then? Well, I think it sounds exciting, Alon. You think everything sounds exciting? Well, that new boy thing and all. Might give us something new to natter about. A new boy, Zim? What's it gonna pick up, anyway? Alien radio drama? Not sure, Alon. Maybe we'll get some fancy pictures. Seems to me it'd be more interesting to go sideways than back up top. You're going sideways, Alon. Right you are, Zim. It's all this sitting around nattering with you. Hey, Tommy. I don't suppose you'll be back in the shop soon? Oh. Or, I mean, I can come back later? Oh, uh, no. What do you need? It's just that the professor and I need some sea rocks. I mean, filter rocks from older times that have come from the filters, and I feel like you might have one? Shh, quiet! Don't be mentioning Filter Frankie! You know that every piece in my inventory is legally obtained, or, or legally found, right? Right, sure. That's why I'm here, to legally acquire an item of yours that you may have. Okay, look and listen here, Longy Long Pants. I shut the store for a reason, you know? Oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you Longy Long Pants just then. You sure you don't want me to come back another time? It's fine. I'm just feeling sorry for myself. I've got this gut feeling that my beautiful angel wife don't care about me no more. Oh. No, I know I'm oversharing again. Tommy, you gotta stop oversharing. Look, kid, either way, I'm not gonna be of any help to you today. Ah, uh, if you're sure. Yeah, you just caught me on a blue note, that's all. She's been spending so much time with that beautiful chunk of marble. You know, the guy in the silk robe and the flowing locks? Harold, if you're going to lecture me... I wasn't. Well, swell. But could you leave me alone anyway? You're cool. So be cool all of the time with my patented Consta-Cool fabrics. So you see, that's the slippy difference. And if you just watch this exciting infomercial... Ah, Harold! If it isn't my favorite multi-maintenance man! Wait! Are you sure I can't interest you in... Oh, never mind. Hello. How's business? You're an everyman, right? I've made a new ad, and I need your opinion. I mean, I think it's great, but maybe it's too high concept. Oh, well... I'm not really qualified to... Nonsense! Just watch! I was trying to read a book in the comfort of my own home, but my own home wasn't comfortable. It was too hot to concentrate. Will I ever be able to read to my children or enjoy the adventures of the Fedora 4 from my armchair again? Why, yes, of course you will! With my patented, tried and tested aircon system, you'll always be able to keep your brain, books, and body sweat free and as cool as Jimson Jameson himself. Please note, Slippy's aircon system is not officially endorsed by the creators of the Fedora 4 or their likenesses. Burr. Sometimes I just can't get cozy. How's a man supposed to look after his family with cold arms? My family are depending on me. What am I going to do? Clad yourself in one of our triple insulating cozy jackets and matching thermal underwear, of course. You know what they say, warm hands, warm heart. Slippies means heritage. I'm the latest in a long tradition of winter sports enthusiasts. Slipmires throughout history have kept everyone from royalty to the common man warm and cozy in their pursuits of the great outdoors. Slippies means social responsibility. 
The Schleppmeyers were one of the most generous sponsors of the Fedora One project, giving back to the people, sharing their knowledge of insulation technologies and considerable wealth to keep humanity warm and cozy among the stars. Remember, you deserve to live and work at whatever temperature is right for you. With over 200 years of expertise, you can bet the weather forecast shows slippies across the board. Come in out of the cold and into slippies. Slippies, heat protection so good, it'll be a cold day in hell. Well, what did you think? Um, it was... There were lots of things, and... Uh, Great! So glad you agree. And while you're here... I was just going... Ah, oh, come on! You can't go without testing my new half-pipe experience. It's new and improved by a little modification to my patented aircon system that I'm calling the... Freezer! Is that... Do I have to... I'm glad you asked. It combines precise atmospheric condition synthesis with the ski sim to recreate the most lifelike experience of skiing you can dream of! That sounds... uh, wait. Me? Skiing? But I don't... Nonsense! I'm sure you're a natural! Now let's get you strapped in! You were really blown away by it, huh? First time's the hardest. It's all downhill from there. <laughs> I guess I'm slippy by name, but you're slippy by nature. <laughs> I guess so. I'd really better go now. Sure, sure, but just so you know, I run a pretty generous referral scheme, if you're interested. For every customer you get. Got a dash. Okay, Harold. Be skiing ya. Hello. Eh, man! Welcome to the fish fish hut. Sample our homegrown fedora fish or our freshwater catch of the day. What's the catch of the day today? Today, we have the great spotted super grouper. It sounds tasty. Uh, just out of interest, is that a native fish? Hard to tell, man. You know, a few of the ship's fish escaped during the crash. So we don't know if they thrive in the ocean, or even intermingle with native species. But we can guarantee that fresh super grouper taste you know and love. There's the blue rock. 
the bane of my day. Where's Tommy when you need him? Hey there. The name is Eve, not there. Oh, sorry, Eve. Can I help you, mister? No, just came to visit Rafi. What you playing? Oh, some game. I'd rather be reading, but here we are. What do you like to read? Anything, really, you know. At the moment, hegemony and the pan-liberalism agenda of agnostic psychopolitic, mostly. That's a book? Yes. Say, did you know Captain at Large Burnhout holds the high score in this game? No. That's cool. I always wondered what those initials at the top of the leaderboard meant. Yeah. Well, see ya. Oh, hey, Rafi. Hmm. Harold. Is everything okay? The tube route to the school and the social district is out. Oh, right. Makes sense. Annoying. That's not what's annoying. Oh? Kids. Everywhere. All the time. No school means no peace. You're just hanging around. Taking space. Playing all the arcades. Oh, dear. But isn't that what this place is for? Kind of? Oh. I see. Good luck.
Oh, or not. Hey, how is it going, Harold? Not too shabby, thanks. How about you? I'm super, actually. I found a book. Oh, cool. What kind of book? It was just discovered. A book written on Earth. Nobody on the station has read it yet. Apart from me. Wow, what's it about? Stick around and you'll find out. My newest performance piece is a reading of it. Oh, nice. Which part? All of it, Harold. All of it. Without interruption. It's gonna be a wild ride, so buckle up. Wow, okay. Good luck. Hey, buddy. Hey, Harold. Great to see you. How about that announcement, eh? Yeah, it was really something. It sure was. I try not to busy myself with those kinds of affairs. I'm just happy you're joining in for the station jog. The jog? Uh, I was only... Chris promised me he'd be here any minute. Now we've really got a jog team on our hands. I think I'll pass. No one's forcing you, Harold. But why don't you keep me company until Chris arrives? Okay, that I can do. How's the post today? Ah, oh, it's a bit slow, what with the tube to the utility district being out. So I can't really work. Not working makes me so restless. I hope it's back soon. Good thing you have the arcades to jog around. Yep, and Chris can't get to the school for the same reason. So at least we'll have plenty of time to work out together. That young man is almost as fit as me. Why do I feel like I'm the odd one out? Oh, hey, Chris. Last to arrive, first to finish. That's my motto. Harold, won't you stay? The jog team won't be the same without you. Yeah, venga, Harold. You can't leave now, I just got here. Jog team, jog team, jog team.
Um, okay. Go jog team. <laughs> Come on, Harold. Keep up. Deep breaths, Harold. Guys. <laughs> Guys. Run with the jog. I thought I was fit. <sighs> Go on. Without me. <sighs> Good show, Harold. How's everyone feeling? <sighs> I think that was a new personal best for me. Fine. Fine. Thanks, buddy. How'd you both keep so fit? Oh, you know me, Harold. I've been running around this station for years. Thought I'd keep up my reputation for same-day service after all. Healthy body, healthy mind. That's what keeps me going. Gotta set a good example for those lazy students of mine, too. <laughs> Have you got any tips? Just keep on moving, Harold. You never know when you'll have to slow down. So keep going while you can. Destination determined. Now, relax with all water. You're here. Thank you for choosing all water tubes. Location nominated. Journey commencing. All water thanking you. Thank you for traveling with all water. Oh, graffiti. What good is asking where is home anyway? Where else are we gonna go? Could they just leave some notes around? I wonder if this is the light keepers again, or just someone copying their style. Will they ever reveal themselves?
So, did you get the rock? Well, I did go and see Tommy, but he and Bridget, um, have some marital issues. I'm sorry to hear they're not blithely going through life in perfect bliss, but we need the rock, Harold. How are things going with Bridget? I really hope you're not asking in relation to the marital problems. No, I'm just trying to find the rock. Hmm. I think she's gone back to the harvest office now. Oh, okay. Thanks, Professor. traveling with all water. You're welcome. Ah, hello there. Secretary 8? That's me, sir. Can I help you get where you're going? That's okay. I was actually wondering... Well, I've been speaking to your brothers. Oh, how nice. Which ones? Mr. 17 and Mr. 24. Well, I didn't speak to Mr. 24 about that, but... Ah, yes. Yes, good, loyal, all-water employees both. I dare say I've been a good influence. Although even my shining example couldn't extend to him. So, he's the fourth brother. What happened to him? Oh, <clears throat> I do apologize. I've got to see to, uh, matters. But I'm sure 24 can help with your inquiries. He has a better grip on the whole sordid affair than I do. Okay, Mr. Eight. Little Miss, are you lost? You could call me Lise. And no, I'm just waiting for someone. Oh, is Lise like a combination of Little and Miss? No, stupid. It's my name. What's your name? It's Harold. Nice to meet you. Is Harold like R and old combined? Well, I suppose it is, actually. Can you just leave me alone? I'll yell Stranger Danger if you don't. Okay, bye, Lise. Welcome. 
I am All Water Automated Secretary Number One. How may I assist your All Water related learning? There were the dark times. And slowly but Tell me about All Water Time Introduction. Eight years ago, our illustrious and suave CEO, Brenner Castlechop, made the brave decision to tackle the inaccuracy of the standard analog clocks by introducing unified AW time. A ship-wide, perfectly synced system that ensures people are always in time on time together. In a remarkable gesture of generosity, Fedorans were given the opportunity to exchange their old clocks and watches for free. An offer most people took up and thoroughly enjoyed immediately. There were a few skeptical holdouts, but they were eventually won over by peer pressure. Usually annoyed friends having to do the math when arranging a meetup time. As well as the generous tube system and other such all water service vouchers offered to them. When was All Water founded? The Municipal Freshwater Clarification Agency was formed just after the crash, but it was rebranded to All Water in 12789 AC, just prior to the introduction of the transportation tube system. So, what exactly does All Water do? All Water Corporation is dedicated to making the lives of Fedorans easier, more pleasurable, and more sustainable. Major services include regulation of the ship's day-night cycle, the tube transportation system, organizing the monthly all-water ball, balancing the energy budget, and overseeing the ship's water supply and filtration systems. All Water is also invested in exciting new science initiatives, some or all of which may be strictly confidential at this time. Please check with your nearest All Water Secretary about the status or indeed existence of such initiatives. Can you tell me about the current CEO? CEO Brenna Castlechop began her All Water career at the age of 16. She graduated from her internship to a full-time position after she devised a mathematical theory to reduce the calculations needed to make different electronic systems communicate with one another. These improvements would eventually become the basis for the ship's current intranet system, architected by temporary all-water employee, a redacted, codenamed Dr. Computer. During this time, the Schlippmeyer family and the Freshwater Clarification Agency were engaged in a dispute over the ship's water supply, the former holding a chemically-based freeze filtration system over the current but outdated machinery. Castlechop wrote a proposal to improve the existing system by overhauling its connective mechanics, which led to all water being able to reject the Schlippmeyer's costly license fees. Her expertise, including her initiative to renew the physical connection between water reservoirs, filtration systems, and the various districts, eventually evolved into the tube transportation system and saw her promoted to sub-chief of the directive branch of operations. She finally became CEO in 13152 AC after widespread pressure throughout the organization on the incumbent CEO, Dr. Rufus Bureaucratze, to finally step down and let the Wonderkind take charge of all water at last. There were the dark times. Bye. The All Water Corporation wishes you a pleasant day. A light held aloft by the hands of All Water Corporation. Mr. 24, hi. Mr. Halibut? So, I was just talking to your brother, Secretary 17. I mean, and <laughs> it was funny. Actually, at first I thought he was your other brother, 8. I'm sure he found it just as hilarious as I do. Do you need something? Only that when I spoke to 8 about what 17 said, he said to speak to you about what happened with your fourth brother. Ah, yes. Our wayward Warren, the fourth brother who went his separate way, choosing a life of gastronomical frivolity over contributing to society with all water. Oh, I see. Are you ashamed of him just because he didn't follow you all into working for the corporation? 
Is that why none of you like to talk about him? Actually, he tried, but he didn't pass the entrance exam. We suspect his heart wasn't really in it. We used to do everything together, and we were supposed to stick together. But he didn't study enough, and now... Yes, what does he do now? <sighs> Last I heard, Warren had started a food stall. I don't want to think about it. Okay, well, thanks for telling me about him. I'll leave you be. There were the dark times. And slowly but surely, light returned to the fedora. A light held aloft by the hands of all water corporation, which illuminated the many innovations we now rely upon. In 12,780 AC, we rebranded from the Municipal Freshwater Clarification Agency to All Water Corporation. The first tube system was unveiled to the public in 12,787 AC, followed by the first replacement of our inaugural seal with Madame Brenner Capital. Hello, citizen. Oh, hey, Captain at Large. Call me Zoya, please. What can I do for you? Just doing my rounds. Do you need anything? Me? No, I'm doing great. We really pulled it off, eh? Oh, do you want some help putting it back on? Uh, 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 hey, no, the announcement. Wasn't it epic? And don't you think I did pretty darn well? Uh, yeah. There were lots of announcements, and I liked the bit where you... Ah, yes. That was a nice touch, wasn't it? Maybe people will see that I can be useful now. That I can lead. Take destiny in my own hands. Destiny? Yes, destiny. Oh, speaking of which, I must get back to work. I've got an important new announcement to work on for Madam CEO. Thanks for stopping by. Travel in style with all water. Unsatisfactory journey for some reason? Just contact your nearest uh, and all water will make it up to you. Mr. Eight, hey there. Hello again. Did you talk to 24 in the end? Yes, and then to 17. So, I know about Warren now. How do you feel about the whole situation? I feel morose. We were such a tight-knit family before Warren caused schism. You know, despite us being quadruplets, I quickly became the natural leader and trendsetter. So I suppose Warren, being technically the youngest by a few minutes, always resented me for that. Gosh, it must have been so tiring. 
Yes, I understand childbirth is really rather taxing. Four at the same time is quite a feat. Uh, uh, I meant the arguments between you four. But yes, that too. Anyway, I suppose he's due back from his palate-pleasing pilgrimage one of these days. That'll be awkward. I'm curious to meet him. At least it'll be easy for me to recognize him. Or so you think. He's really quite different from the rest of us. <laughs> I remember Seventeen joking that it was more like we were three identical triplets and Warren was the even one out. You know, like odd one out, but with four. It's an even number. I get it. Now that I think about it, it's clear Seventeen inherited the maths gene, but not the humor gene. to taste the disinfectant. Mist commences in three. Three. Wait for it. Zero. Inspecting. Oh, there's Bridget. And Chris? What are they doing in there? I can't hear them, but maybe I can lip-read. Hmm, seems like Bridget is pretty excited about something. It looks like she's saying... It's unacceptable. Tommy would realize... It's just... not... worth the... Risk. Ooh, Chris is replying. Let's see. It's totally worth any risk. Anyway, we should get back before people notice. Hmm, pretty mysterious. Now I wish I'd never skipped those lip-reading classes. Sorry, how's it going? Oh, it's been tough, Harold. Every detail has a detail. It's like this filigreed... Oh, uh, it's good you're here, actually. Yeah? What do you need? Well, I'm having a bit of difficulty with a 3D printer. It's leaving gaps everywhere. Oh, okay. Shall I take a look? Yes, please. But I hope you're better with technology than you are with the ladies. Um, I hope so, too. Anyway, see if you and your screwdriver can get this printer its third dimension back. You have to undo the screws first to remove the front panel.
I think you're nearly there. Uh, keep going. You see that hole? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Harold. I couldn't resist. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Sai, was the printer even broken? Maybe, maybe. If it's any consolation, I discovered this little trick the hard way. Ow! Why didn't you just fix it then? Well, where would the fun have been in that? I'm not sure I like your idea of fun. Hmm, funny. Sunny says the same thing to me. But I guess she didn't like your idea of fun either, eh? Ow. Think of it as a wake up call, Harold. Yeah, a little extra juice. Oh, that reminds me. Moreau asked me to ask you how are the details coming along? Oh, thanks, Harold. Just like her to ask that. Huh. <laughs> Is it? Um, anyway, see you next time, Sai. Uh, one more thing. What is it, Sai? Could you take Maro a message? I suppose. Is it just gonna be like hers? No, 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 nothing like that. It's something definitely unrelated. So, what's the message? Oh. Okay, fine. You got me. Happy? Just tell her procedure smeecher and that she puts the Y R U in Cyrus. I don't know that's such a good idea. I mean, what is this whole thing about exactly, anyway? She started it! Back in the days, we were both part of the Archive Club. She was always so darn keen to throw away all the rules and invent new archiving procedures. She called it a healthy distrust for calcified mental models. But all it did was stop us ever getting anything done. So, you disagreed about archiving? Precisely. But it was fundamental. I mean, we respected each other's work, but there was this deep difference. And I guess neither of us was willing to budge. So, what did you decide about the archives? That's not important anymore. Come on, man, sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Okay. So, no message for her? <sighs> Just tell her I say hi. She'll know what I mean. Okay. Catch you later, Sai. Welcome. 
please submit to a gentle disinfecting. Close your eyes. Procedure will begin in three, two, Destination decided. Enjoy the view. You have arrived. Please exit the tube in an orderly manner. We hope you travel with us again soon. Hey, Professor. Got a message from Cyrus for you. Out with it, then. He says... Hi. Hi? Just hi? Yeah, just that. He said you'd know what it means. He's a sly one sometimes. I'll give him that. Stubborn as a mule. What's a mule? Oh, don't you start, Harold. Leave me be. I've got to think of a comeback. I mean, get some important work done. <laughs> Destination selected. Have a pleasant journey and a fantastic day. You may now exit the tube. Thank you on behalf of the All Water Corporation for choosing to travel with us today. Mr. 17. Correctly calculated. I can't offer you another raffle, I'm afraid. That's okay, I understand. But I asked 24 about Warren. The way some of you talked about him, I thought he'd... Something bad had happened or something. Something bad did happen to him. I'm sure 24 told you about his entrance exam, but that's not the whole story. We would have supported him anyway, but he began to be disparaging about old water, suggesting that maybe it was for the best that he didn't get a position. So... That's when you fell out. Uh, I, I think so. It's complicated. It's been a long time since we spoke. He went off traveling the station on some chaotic quest to find culinary inspiration, I believe. I see. I mean, 24 and 8 didn't make it easy for him, but I don't want to bore you with the family history. And I need to get back to revising these raffle ratios. Okay. See you, Mr. 17. about Filter Frankie. Filter Frankie? Yeah, Frankie, who likes filters. Hence, Filter Frankie. Right, well, I heard he's always mucking about in the filters, digging up all sorts that he sells to Tommy. What I want to know is, why doesn't anyone just go down there and find stuff? Have you ever been down to filters, Alon? Nah, you? I got shown him once. Not very appealing, and technically off-limits. Well then... There we go. Who you reckon he or indeed she is then? 
Well, we can probably surmise he, or indeed she, isn't really called Frankie. Solid reasoning, Alon. So my guess is, he or she could be anyone. Could be you, Alon. Could be you, Zim. Aye. Then, uh, there would we be. Down the filters, most like. Aye. Good thing we're not down the filters. I'm just getting comfy. I'm, I'm sorry to bother you again, but I went looking for Mrs. Vandervart, and she was at the Harvest office. None news. It's her office. Where else would she be? I know, but it's more who was there with her that I thought, you know, I should mention. What? Who is she with? It looked totally professional. I didn't see anything bad. Just Senor T Tinnerbaum. Gah, what? What's he doing in her office? There's no way he knows enough about energy. If I still had my own hair, it would never have come to this. Tommy, I'm sure it's not like that. I just... You don't understand, Harold, what it's like to get old. But I'll be damned if I'm gonna take this lying down. Tommy, I don't think you should, uh, get angry. And you're in on this with me now, Harold. You did the right thing bringing this to me. I'm really sure it's nothing, just a lunch chat. I've just been so busy working on this damned store sign, thinking Bridget would love the ambition, you know? See me as a real go-getter again. But maybe this whole time I should have been showing her signs of my love. I'll bet she knows you... You're absolutely right. We'll modify the sign. Tonight, make it into a great big sparkly neon proclamation of my, nay, our love. A sign she won't be able to miss. A sign to blind that glossy maned Casanova. I mean, I'm not sure that's the sign. Don't doubt it, Harold. This is gonna work. I just feel it. You're in, right? Will you help me save our love? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll try. Knew I could count on you. Let's get to work. I'm gonna go freshen up a little. Might even put on a different outfit, now that I think of it. Will you go and look for Bridget for me? My dear Bridget, I'm sorry we haven't been able to spend much time together recently. So I get how you might be attracted to the man-machine with the flowing looks of an angel that you call your friend. But I do beg you to give me another chance. Please, Bridget, will you let me back into your heart and take this monument to our love as a sign of my great affection? Tommy, of course I love you, and I would never betray you. I just wanted to give you some space. I saw you working so hard on your new sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. Couldn't tell me what? Oh, what the heck. The ship's facing some issues with the energy budget. I knew you would need a lot of light for your sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. No way we've got an energy problem here. That was it? No helping Tinner Bomb with his spray tan? That was it. No spray tan. I'm so sorry, Buttercupsy. I love you. I love you. Thank you for your help, Harold. I was hoping you'd accept this stone as a thank you. Ah! Oh, no. Moreau won't be happy to hear about this. Harold, how are you doing? Uh, you know, same old. Yep, same old here, too. Energy issues? You heard that, Mr. Busy Ears? Ugh, but yes. I mean, we've always got to be careful and efficient. And, you know, this isn't public. 
but I want to be extra careful right now until we figure out what's going on. Is the station using more energy than it used to? Well, yeah, especially the transportation system. And the damn tubes or tickets never work and just get more expensive all the time anyway. Right. You know, I'm not sure I've ever understood exactly how the energy process works. Gosh, why are you asking me this now? It's not exactly a line answer. Look, if you really want to know, swing by the Energy Harvest Office sometime and I'll break it down for you. Remind me why we can't just reduce the transport system? Huh, I ask myself the same thing. Every time we add some new upgrade or expand it, it eats up more energy. Our production process doesn't get any more efficient. Plus, when we held an anonymous vote about it, the majority of Fedorans said they'd rather have more transport now rather than more energy later. So... I'd better go. Thanks, Bridget. See you, Harold. Ah, oh, Harold. Listen, about the rock, I'm really sorry it's gone. You know, I would have loved for you to have it. Uh, it's okay, Tommy. It wasn't your fault. I just feel bad, you know? I was so wrapped up in my own stuff, maybe... Oh, I don't know. Thanks, Tommy. Maybe it'll turn up. I'm just glad you and Bridget made up. Thanks, Harold. You're a swell guy. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Let you know if I hear anything. Thanks, Tommy. Major? Harold! If it transpires you had anything to do with this wanton violation of Code 7887, then so... No, no. I want to find the rock more than anyone. Hmm. Say I believe you. Can you think of anything that might help us find the culprits? I'm sorry, Major. I'll let you know if I think of anything. See that you do. That missing rock is a stain on my sheet of justice. I will. Bye, Major. Hmm. Be good, Harold. Hey, the... Eve, do you know Rafi well? Not really. We have a mutual toleration understanding. That sounds, uh, nice. Do they have many of those? No, that's a pretty rare privilege. You gotta respect their boundaries, you know? Hey, Rafi. Hmm. What are you up to today? Lots. Very busy. Too busy to chit-chat. Onot? Harold? So, where did you find the book? Huh. <laughs> I have a friend in logistics. There were a couple of unopened safety deposit boxes, unopened since launch because the owners hadn't actually made it onto the ship. The statute of limitations ran out, they cracked them open and she gave me a call to see if I wanted this book. Whoa. What else was in the boxes? Oh, I didn't ask, but I wonder who it belonged to. Yeah, and why they never made it onto the ship. Some mysteries will never be solved. Oh, but maybe I'll base my next interpretive dance piece on that idea. I can't wait to see it. Come on, give me a clue about the plot. No way I'm ruining a surprise for you. Let's just say it's an epic Bildungsroman told through multiple narrators set across the ancient Byzantine Empire. The far future planet of Gazorpazor, and the then present day of 19th century Papua New Guinea. Wow, it does sound pretty epic. What's it called? Nebola. I'll be watching. Good luck. Thanks, Harold. Hope you enjoy the show.
buddy, you got a sec? Always, always. Take as many seconds as you need. So you've been the postman for ages. What was it like before the crash? The main thing that's changed is people get their mail quicker now, thanks to the tube system. Say what you will about all water, but you can't knock free... Well, I mean, mostly free movement of labor and letters. Ah, but I remember now. One time, probably a few months before the crash, I had to deliver a letter right across to the other side of the station. Everything that could have gone wrong on that delivery did go wrong. First, I tried to take a shortcut and got lost. I had to go through some construction works and lost my hat somewhere along the way. Then I got back on track, but tripped over a rat and tore my uniform. I stopped to get some food along the way and burned my mouth. Never been back to Charlie's silly chili grilly since. <laughs> and you know, what would it have looked like to the letters recipient if I'd turned up hatless, red-faced, bruises on my knees? Well, I was already late, so I went anyway. I posted the letter and sat down on the bench opposite to catch my breath and fell asleep. When I woke up, she was standing there, looking concerned at me. Her? Um, yes. Anyway, no torn uniform since the tube system was put in place. Bye, buddy. See you, Harold. Hello again. F -f 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 Fancy some f -f 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 fish? You know where we So, Slippy, you've got a pretty illustrious family, right? I certainly do. The Schlippmeyers go back hundreds of years, but it wasn't until Edwin Schlippmeyer made his fortune from nothing that our name was really on the map. What did he do? He invented winter sports. He had nothing but the clothes on his back, and it was a particularly harsh winter in the mountains where he lived. So he decided to create a tournament for all the rich nobles in the area. He spent weeks whittling sticks into slalom posts. He invented the slalom at that moment and convinced his friends to act as expert judges, then used his last savings to print and distribute flyers, calling for high-born participants. The entry fee was a hundred schmeckles, and the prize? The inaugural Bruregsburg Principality Slalom Championship. Wow, that's quite a story. Who won? What? That's not important here. Hey, Zim. What do you know about Filter Frankie? Filter Frankie? Yeah. Got you a message. Oh, thank you, Miss... Zoodle, pleased to make your acquaintance. So, it's from Felix. He says there's something he wants to show you and to expect a secret message soon. Oh, what? Why? I mean, and why couldn't he just have said that to me himself? I don't know. Go ask him. My work here is done. Later's, mister. Thanks.
Destination determined. Now, relax with all water. You're here. Thank you for choosing all water tubes. Hey, number eight. May I help you? Location nominated. Journey commencing. All water thanking you. Thank you for traveling with all water. Remember, the all-water tube system will shortly be closing for the night. Get snug, not stranded. Professor, you're not gonna believe this. Why does that not surprise me? The blue rock. It's gone. You found it? You lost it? It was stolen from Tommy's store. This is utterly vexatious, Harold. I know. What shall we do? We? I need to think. Madam CEO, you're going to want to hear this. I'm listening. It's the new boy, ma'am. It's picked up a signal that we have reason to believe originates from Earth. Earth? Have you reverse dated the transmission? We have. It was sent in 2102. So 126 years after we left. Things would have been pretty rock bottom back there by then. Let's hear what was important enough for them to call after us. Maybe it was their final farewell, huh? <laughs> I hope it's nothing too awkward. Okay, I'll send a copy via... Well, just play it to me. I've got a 1205. But, Mom, it's only 10... And one of those. Okay, playing back now. This is Earth. Earth to the Fedora. Boy, you were sure hope you're all okay. Whomever is still out there. We're not quite sure how to tell you this. Johnston! Cut the damn line! You're live! What? Oh, fudge! Professor, did you hear that strange message? It was hard to miss. It's the first message from Earth. Ever? Certainly in my lifetime, at least. I wonder... What kind of message would a dying civilization speculatively send to a ship that can never return? What do you think it means? It means that the fact Allwater haven't shared it publicly yet means they're thinking about how to turn it to their advantage. What if it's not the first message? Don't be paranoid, Harold. What reason or authority would they have for keeping messages from us? Still, even if they had planned to share it immediately, they look suspicious now. Gosh, that message could be anything. Maybe they've got information for us about our mission. Hmm. Well, what could that information be? If we presuppose... Yes? Oh, it's you. Yes? No. Indubitably. Fine. What? 15%? Out of the question. Okay, sure. See you shortly. Harold, I want you to come with me. Huh? To where? What? Who was that? Why? It was the CEO of Allwater Corp, of course, asking me to jump. What for? How high? Indeed, Harold. Indeed. Well, unfortunately for my bath, she was adamant we went there immediately. She even unlocked our tube tickets for emergency night travel. But why? What does she want with us? Well, we'll soon find out, won't we? Come on, let's not keep Her Highness waiting. Crisis Control. We need to get out there ahead of the turn in public sentiment. First move advantage and get this working for us, not against us. 
Yes. Come in, come in, come in. Now, as you both know, time is of the essence. Sorry. Where are my manners? Would either of you like something to drink? Ah, I suppose I might like a coffee? There's really no time for coffee. Time is of the essence. Professor, would you like to sit? No, thank you. I prefer to stand. Oh, a woman of action, I love that. Anyway, we must act. Due to the unfortunate Communique incident, we've been forced to move up the schedule. It's imperative we deliver some good news about the start procedure. Hmm. I suppose that wouldn't hurt. To that effect, Professor. And, um, you there. I'll need you to supervise Cyrus directly. We can't afford for any unforeseen delays. Cyrus, he works best undisturbed. The man is a stubborn buffoon, but there's no doubting his thoroughness. Professor, please. It would do this old heart good to know that you were keeping a watchful eye on him. Or maybe your, um, protege here could do it. I'll hang out with, I mean, watch Cy, sure. If it makes you happy, Madame CEO, we'll make sure Cyrus delivers. Great. Music to my ears. Thank you both. You've done all water and the ship a great service. We're ready. Go live and stay on schedule. It's my privilege to announce to you all today that our new boy program has already proven an unmitigated success. We present to you now the full and unedited audio that represents the first incoming message we've received in our lifetimes. Now, before the message plays, I'd like to take a moment to reiterate just how proud we should all be of progress on the new start procedures. It won't be long before we're ready for the first attempt the latest in a long line of steps on the road to a greater, brighter future for us all. Please enjoy this message, brought to you by the All Water Corporation. This is, uh, uh, the Fedora. Boy, we sure hope you're all okay, whomever is still out there. We're not quite sure how to tell you this. Things were pretty rocky here when you left, of course, and, you know, that was a great move. Probably the right decision at the time. We didn't know whether to even tell you this, but we figured maybe it would give you some comfort way out there in the freezing clutches of deep space. What? Oh, right. Yeah, I guess. Or, I mean, even better, the comforting, warm embrace of a lovely, habitable new planet. Well, we just wanted to let you know that we pulled together down here. The sparrows calmed down and things pretty much worked themselves out. Life still isn't perfect. Bananas died out, and you've got to be pretty careful around water. But by and large, we're back on track. I've survived. Wish we could send you a postcard. Anyway, be safe, and maybe one day we'll get a hello from you. We'll be listening. What are you all still doing here? Don't you have work or something to do? Scram! Welcome. I am All Water Automated Secretary Number One. How may I assist your All Water related learning? Bye. The All Water Corporation wishes you a pleasant day.
<clears throat> Captain at large, Baronhout? Ah, uh, hello. Uh, how are you, uh, um... I'm Harold Halliburton, sir. Uh, yes, I'm sure you are. Harold, tell me, have you ever felt lost? Oh, I always get lost around here. Uh, no, Harold, I mean, feeling like you have no purpose. I know my purpose. But sometimes it doesn't seem very important. You heard the leak, I presume? Yeah, of course. That leak, that one message, it's undone me. If my whole family, this whole mission, the ship, my captaincy at large, what if it was all a mistake? Oh, I see. Well, maybe Earth didn't get as bad as people thought it would, but we're still us. And you know, it wasn't us that chose to fly away. I suppose. Speaking of which, have you ever lost someone, Harold? Have you? Yes. Someone important. She's gone, Harold. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. What happened? Coco has taken an unscheduled leave of absence. Oh, so she's not lost forever? No, I'm sure she'll return eventually. But every moment without her, I spend in longing and despair. Is it anyone I might know? My beloved? Her name is Coco. Oh, not sure I've ever met her. Do you want to see a picture? Coco is a bird. Harold, you're such an understanding sort. Could you try to find her for me? I'd look for her myself, but in these uncertain times, I think it's best I don't leave my post. So, about Coco... Yes. Such a loyal first mate. Does she maybe have any favorite hiding places? Hmm. Not that I know of. I did find her once in a broom closet trying to hatch a sea sponge inside my hat. I promise to keep an eye out for her. Oh, Harry. I hope she's okay. I'm not sure she has another friend in the world. Are you sure you want it to be me looking for her? Whatever are you implying? I'm sure you're perfectly capable, um, and I'm thoroughly and otherwise engaged. Bye. Enjoy traveling with all water. You're welcome. All water compliments you on your choice of destination. Hey, Professor. Oh, are those the new teacups? Come and see for yourself. Oh, I promise I ordered them. Harold, just look.
Most intriguing. Hi, irregular. So, if the Light Keepers could get the rock, and they knew we wanted it, that means that, uh, they must be someone who... Harold, it's late, and we've had enough excitement for one day. Let's leave the theories until tomorrow. Sure. I'm just happy that whoever they are, they're on our side. So it seems for now. Good night, Harold. See you in the morning. Okay. Night, Professor. Whoever made that leak must be feeling pretty terrible right now. I'm glad it wasn't me messing up for once. Let's see what tomorrow brings. <laughs> 